Well, this may be controversial, but we may have a contender for second best film in this franchise so far. Welcome back to The Haunted Beard, everybody. Thank you for joining me. So I have been making my way through the Texas Chainsaw Massacre franchise, going through and reviewing all the films. And today I'm talking about Texas Chainsaw Massacre, The Beginning. This was a first time watch for me, and this is the prequel to the remake from 2003. This one takes place in 1969, so I think it's, what is that, four years uh, prior to the uh, events of the previous film. And in this one, we follow two brothers and their girlfriends who are taking a final road trip before the two brothers are supposed to head back to enlist for service in the Vietnam War. And of course, on their road trip, they come across the backwoods of Texas and run into some pretty brutal and terrible stuff. Now, typically my issue with prequels is that a lot of times they're giving us information that we either don't really care about or don't really need. They're answering questions that we never really asked. And also, too, I feel like it's it's detrimental because you kind of already know that some of the characters are going to survive. And so it, it kind of takes away some of the suspense and the mystery of it to a degree as well. And Texas Chainsaw The Beginning does suffer from some of the typical prequel issues that I have. Luckily in this case though, the prequel stuff is pretty much over and done with by the 20 minute mark, but the film actually opens in August of 1939, so 30 years prior. We actually see Leatherface's mom give birth to him right in the, the meat packing plant, and he ends up getting thrown into a dumpster. And then he is taken out of the dumpster by Mama Hewitt and is taken to the house. And, of course, Arlie Ermey's there and he gets raised as a Hewitt. So we find out that he's technically not a real Hewitt. Uh, and then we get a little bit of, of background on him as he grows up. Mainly, we just find out that he had worked at the meatpacking plant and the plant closes and he gets fired because his boss is a total jerk. And since he's no longer able to take out his violent tendencies and aggression and all that stuff on the animals, he has to resort to humans. And thus, Leatherface is born. So once you get to 20 minutes in, the rest of this film plays out like a typical sequel would play out, with technically the only exception being uh, you get to see why uh, Uncle Monty, I think is his name, why he loses his legs. That's really the only other thing that would give you any sort of context to the previous movie. But yeah, the first 20 minutes are kind of unnecessary. Again, it's just, it's information that like, you know, I'm just kind of like, okay, I, yeah, I don't really need this. It doesn't really matter all that much to me, you know, how he got connected to the Hewitt family and why he developed his, you know, homicidal tendencies. It, you know, it's just kind of typical prequel stuff in, in information that I just don't really care all that much about. Then we're introduced to our main four characters, the two brothers and their girlfriends, and I have to commend the writers here because they actually do a pretty respectable job giving us likable characters. Uh, certainly you could do way worse than than what we're given in this movie. You know, they're not the most well-developed, right? There's not a whole lot of depth to them, but at least we're not miserable watching them. They're not overly obnoxious or annoying. They're not overly idiotic and, you know, just making a whole bunch of dumb, stupid decisions. So they're at least likable. And believe it or not, I actually kind of found myself feeling a little bit of an attachment and a connection to them later on in the film to where I was like, man, who's going to die? Which one of them is going to go? And so yeah, they do a good job just making characters that you can at least enjoy watching. And now for the rest of the film, for the most part, I don't really have a whole lot of negative stuff to say. I actually had a pretty decent and enjoyable time with Texas Chainsaw the beginning. And like I said, part of it is due to just the characters being you know, fairly likable and, and enjoying to watch them. Um, but there's just some good stuff here. I really like how they handle the horror elements. There's some gnarly kills. And, and just some good scenes. I think the pacing in the film is also really solid. And so, um, yeah, overall, I mean, had a, a pretty enjoyable experience and en enjoyed it certainly more than I expect that I would. So at this point in the movie, we find out that there's this conflict between the two brothers. The younger one is is 
wanting to basically go AWOL and just avoid the draft and go to Mexico. He doesn't want to go to Vietnam, whereas Matt Bomer's character is all gung-ho. He wants to go over there and, you know, do what he has to do kind of thing. Uh, anyways, that sort of sets up some tension and some conflict as they're driving down the road, and it sets up this huge crash scene when there's this biker that comes by and is trying to rob him. Anyways, they hit this cow in a scene that's actually pretty gnarly, and there's this huge car wreck, and Jordana Brewster gets ejected from the car, and then good old Arlie Ermey comes by to uh, investigate the wreckage. And just like in the remake, uh, Ermey here is pretty solid. Definitely one of the highlights. I wish we could have seen him in more of the Texas Chainsaw movies just because his character is, it just fits well within this world and his performance is just really solid. He just does a really good job with this character. He's definitely one of the highlights of the movie. So he takes the three of them back to the house. Jordana Brewster is hiding and, and gets away. And I liked a little bit of the change of pace here with beginning, whereas especially with the the original film and the remake, you know, you, you've got kind of that long opening section where there's not really much that happens, it, you know, it's just kind of low, mellow, not too eventful for the most part. But with beginning, I like that the characters are in danger sooner. And so we just get more of the tension and, and more of the horror because they're they're captured and in danger earlier. I also like, too, that the four main characters survive quite a bit longer than they have in some of the other films. And so we just get more time with them. And because of that, we, we feel a little bit more invested in their safety and in the outcome of, you know, what happens to them sort of thing. So I thought that was just a good move. And I also like the pacing here as well. It, this movie moves along at a pretty good clip and there's, there's not really hardly any sort of down or dull moments. And the movie kind of bounces around between the characters and it just feels like there, there's more going on. And so there's, there's more that kind of gets you pulled into the movie because of that. So I like that you got the three of them that are captured and they're trying to escape. Well, then you've got Jordana Brewster. She's trying to help them escape and she has to ultimately kind of go on this rescue mission to free them. And then at some points, the three of them who are captured are separated and we kind of cut back and forth between all of them and just feels like there's more going on. There's just kind of it creates more excitement and just kind of gets us more engaged in the movie. And so I just kind of like how they handled all that. There's also just some good scenes. I really like the scene where Ermi has the two brothers tied up and he cuts one of them down and tells him, you know, if you can do 10 push-ups, you can leave. Pretty good scene there. Just a nice tense moment. I like that it cuts between that and his girlfriend who's tied under the kitchen table. And then Mama comes by and is, is singing that song to her and, and wiping her face off with the washcloth. And you just kind of get this nice back and forth of these two kind of creepy, disturbing moments in their own sort of ways. But yeah, just a pretty good little sequence there I enjoyed. I also like that beginning upped the blood and gore. This one is definitely the bloodiest and goriest of the bunch, at least so far. And yeah, there's some pretty gnarly kills in this one that, uh, yeah, I mean, if, if you're here for just some good carnage, you're going to get some good carnage. I really like the kill where the biker guy gets cut in half. That's a solid one. Uh, Matt Bomer's death when he's, you know, nailed down to the board and Leatherface cuts him open with the chainsaw. And that's that speaks to that. Like, I like that they kept the characters, the main characters in the film longer, that they they had them survive longer instead of just killed, you know, one or two of them off earlier. It just gives the kill a little bit more emotion, a little bit more dramatic weight to it. And so it just helps kind of sell the kill. It just makes it more impactful. Especially, too, that Jordana Brewster, his girlfriend, was underneath the table while he's getting cut open. Uh, you get a little dinner scene here. That's not too bad, especially when uh, Dora Baird gets her throat slit open. Not a bad kill there. I like that we get some gnarly goodness with uh, Uncle Monty when he gets his legs cut off. And then the last 10-15 minutes are also pretty fun as well, as Brewster makes her escape and... You know, she goes to the meatpacking plant. She jumps in that big old vat of bloody water, which is just cool. And then the other brother, of course, gets impaled on the chainsaw, which is another pretty solid kill. And then the final sequence there with her where she's making the getaway. 
but it is a little bit predictable. I, you know, I knew that, of course, Leatherface was going to be in the back seat. You know, the music cuts out and I'm like, all right, he's going to pop out, of course. But it's just a fun ending scene that I enjoyed. And since this was my first watch, I, I wasn't sure if Brewster was going to make it out of there alive or not. And so there there was a little bit of unexpected, well, OK, I guess they're going to kill her sort of thing. But I, I didn't know. So there was at least a little bit of, of suspense there. So. Yeah, overall, like I said, I, I enjoyed this more than I expected. It's, you know, obviously by no means a, a classic or a movie I would call great, but there's definitely some fun stuff here, and if you're just looking for some gnarly kills, you're going to get some good gnarly kills. Yeah, there's some more complaints I could make. There's definitely a handful of just terrible jump scares where they just throw a blast of music at you. You know, that sucks. Some of the acting, especially by the younger brother, is not great. So, yeah, there's some typical kind of bad slasher stuff in here a little bit. But overall, the the good definitely outweighs the bad, and I enjoyed myself for the most part. Overall, as far as a score, um, I'm going to go like six and a half, probably something like that. Um, yeah, it's it's just a, it's a fun, enjoyable time with some gnarly kills, and you can certainly do way worse than this. Uh, especially for a movie now in a franchise, what is this part, like, is this five, six, six deep? Yeah. Um, yeah, for, for six movies in, it's it's pretty good. So anyways, yeah, those are my thoughts on Texas Chainsaw, the beginning. Like always, hit me up down below. Let me know your guys' thoughts. Would love to hear from you. Anyways, up next is Texas Chainsaw 3D, which I have seen before, and I am not looking forward to returning to very much, but that's just the way it goes with these things. Sometimes you just got to bite the bullet. But anyways, yeah, that's all I got. Thank you so much for watching. If you got something out of this video, go ahead and do me a favor and do not click that subscribe button unless you want to be haunted by the beard.